Let's get something straight. The Nexus 5X here isn't really an end user smartphone that can be recommended and certainly not its non-USA, non-dollar pricing. What it is, is a damn fine developer reference device. Uh, Google will argue this was all the Nexus line was ever meant to be, but I'd like to point out that the Nexus line has been much beloved by Android fans and that in this case, far from, and I quote, listening to happy Nexus 5 owners, Google has ridden somewhat roughshod over what was prized about the 5 and produced something that's simply not as desirable. Throughout Nexus history, Google has sought to make a, a damn fine reference device for each version of its OS, but the attractions of hardware that was either reasonably priced or had top specification, and sometimes both, combined with unskinned, bloke-free nature of Nexus meant that each generation was rightly beloved and prized by the community. However, this stops, I contend, with the Nexus 5X, I'll leave the 6P for another day, which comes in with so many apparent letdowns for existing users of the 5, the most successful Nexus device of all time, yet with a higher price and arguably the most boring hardware in the history of the mark. Harsh criticism, I know. It's not as if the Nexus 5X hasn't got some decent enhancements, mind you. The use of a Snapdragon 808 processor rather than 800 gives at least an extra 50% in terms of speed. The screen is slightly bigger at 5.2 inch and there's a fast charging capability, meaning that you can go from 0 to 100% in just over an hour. Plus, in line with Google's reference device mantra, there's the obligatory for 2016 fingerprint scanner here on the back of the device within easy reach. Add in dual LED flash for the camera and laser focusing plus future-proof USB Type-C, and you'd have thought that there's easily enough here to make an upgrade of the two-year-old Nexus 5 a no-brainer, except that there's stuff missing, most of which is just about forgivable, but some which isn't. Firstly, the camera lacks the OIS of the Nexus 5. This is a big deal when shooting in low light, since it allows the shutter to be open longer and thus let in more light, reducing noise. In fairness, the new camera does have a larger sensor and larger optics, so low light shots come out quite well without needing stabilisation. But still, I'm a camera geek and I like OIS. Secondly, there's no Qi wireless charging. I and many others love this and swear by it. Put the Nexus 5 down on a convenient charging pad and you're instantly being topped up. A dozen times a day, perhaps, with battery always near 100% and zero wear and tear on physical connector or hassles plugging the jack in. Now, Google argued that the presence of a bigger battery, 2700 milliamp hours versus 2300 in the Nexus 5, faster charging and optimizations in the OS, DOS, all mean that you won't need to charge at all during the daytime. And again, to be fair, the Nexus 5X did get me easily through a day each time with power to spare. So, OK, I'll give it a pass. Thirdly, and while on the subject of charging, Google talked about fast charging, referring to a full 3-amp input by the Type-C connector with a suitable charger in the box. While admirably high current, and while this does the job, why on earth didn't LG and Google go with the industry standard, Qualcomm's Quick Charge 2.0? This uses multiple voltages and currents to achieve even better results, plus you'd then be able to charge quickly from any suitable charger you came across in daily life, rather than having to scurry back to your LG-made Nexus charger at home to get that fast charge. I will give the 5X yet another pass, since the charging issue isn't a showstopper, but it is an annoyance. Fourthly, and yes, this list is growing, isn't it? RAM. While I contend you can never have too much of it, there's also no point in going for too much RAM and having it powered up and idle in a phone, draining precious power. The Nexus 5 had two gig and proved about perfect. One could sense it hit the buffers once in a while, but 99.9% .9 of daily use was contained happily within the 2 gig limit with stock Android, of course. And now we come to the 5X, two years down the line and with a whole new version of Android and a next generation processor. Every geek in the world would at this point step up and declare that the Nexus 5X needed 3 gig of RAM, which indeed the 6P has, by the way to allow at least some margin of error and allow for more ambitious, hungrier applications. Yet the 5X is resolutely stuck at two gigabytes and it seems absolutely fine with it. <laughs> I'm not exactly happy it hasn't got three gig of RAM, mind you. As a geek, I want power and flexibility. But in daily use, it's only choked on me once in a week. And even that only involved waiting a couple of seconds for something else to get knocked on the head in the background. So another pass from me. However, finally, and most damningly, look at the tall form factor of the Nexus 5X. See that big speaker grill at the top, matching the one at the bottom? 
below the screen now play a podcast or uh, Netflix or indeed here a YouTube uh, video or some music. Here's a demo. A bit of Pink Floyd for you. Most famous four notes in history. Let's have some drums. The sound, and it's not that brilliant, it's a bit harsh, only, only comes out from the bottom grill. That's because the top grill is entirely 100% cosmetic and only a bog standard phone earpiece sits behind it. Look, I can accept smartphones growing by a centimetre in length and with a large top bezel if there's a nice speaker housed underneath, but to grow and have this prominent front design element without anything to justify it is insane. This above all is the single biggest fail on the Nexus 5 in my view. I could accept it if the device had been up to a centimetre shorter with a single mono speaker that was good. I could only think the stereo speaker arrangement was planned right up to the last minute and then some middle manager at Google got cold feet about build cost and decided to pull the stereo. Big mistake. Could I accept the one big miss here, the speaker, if the rest of the Nexus 5X had been stunning? Absolutely. But it's not. It's the utter definition of meh. Could I accept this miss if the price had been stunning? Again, absolutely. But it's not. Because of the strength of the US dollar at the moment, it's the decidedly non-budget price of £380 for the 32 gig version here in the UK from the Google Store. There are better phones for a lot less money. See some of my recent reviews. Everything's just so uninspiring. The 5.2 inch IPS LCD display here is no more brilliant than Nexus 5's, while the competition has improved markedly in the last two years. We now expect colours and details to pop off the screen, for contrast to be excellent in all light conditions, for blacks to be black, and so on. I found I was having to run the Nexus 5X as here, on maximum brightness, just in order to be happy with the colours and details of my content. And that's not good enough anymore, especially bearing in mind this isn't a cheap device by 2015 standards. Is there a silver lining to all this doom and gloom? Well, possibly. The 5X's 12 megapixel camera, common to the 6P, by the way, with a few minor back-end processing differences, is actually quite good in anything other than extremely dark conditions. I put it up with the best of Android, including the Galaxy S6 camera, which is a huge compliment for a Nexus device. Admittedly, when light levels are really low, the lack of OIS hits it, and you'll be best bracing the 5X against a wall or a lamppost to take that arty night shot. Plus, there are no manual controls to mess around with. Of course, there are plenty of third-party camera apps to experiment with, so you don't have to live with Google camera application. Caught the camera being so good, of course, is that there's a large sensor, one over 2.3 inches. Um, but with larger than average pixels at 1.55 microns, we normally see 1.1 or 1.4. Um, more light admitted, a lower noise and greater colour accuracy. Add in a relatively large f over 2.0 aperture and optical stack plus really impressive image processing algorithms. Well done, Google. And you've got the recipe for taking very decent photos in most conditions. See the samples here in a variety of light and deliver your own verdict. I was impressed. The infrared laser focusing here, though usually fast, isn't perfect. Trying to focus on something very slender or small as here is doomed to failure. I tried to focus on the tiny flower about a dozen times and utterly failed. The laser needs something meaty to reflect back from, it seems. Video capture is 1080p by default, but can be run at 4K if needed, though neither are spectacular, there being no OIS or even digital stabilization. Even at 1080p, footage ends up jerky. This latter is almost unforgivable, since it's easy to do with the power of the Snapdragon 808 under the hood. Google hasn't even tried in terms of video capture. You can't even snap images during video capture, something we've been used to seeing on Android smartphones for years. The Nexus 5X is quite smart in an unassuming professional way. A solid polycarbonate shell with slightly textured plastic back and Gorilla Glass 3 front. There are no unpleasant surprises, but also nothing to wow the user in the same way as perhaps the Nexus 6P will with its chamfered aluminium body, or the likes of the Galaxy S6 Edge did in various ways using curved glass. Here it's straight up and down glass slab with just a small camera bump on the back to break the monotony. Not that straight is necessarily bad, but the meh hardware design does rather unfortunately mirror the attitude of the device as a whole in terms of components. Display, it's okay, nothing special. Speaker, ditto. Performance, ditto. 
The positioning of the fingerprint sensor on the back is generally excellent, though it's worth noting one huge caveat. You can't unlock it in this way while the phone's on a desk or a sofa, for example. With the iPhone, Sony or Samsung systems, the sensor is always exposed, for example, there or there. A small point, but it may impact your intended use. In the fullness of time, of course, the sensor will also be used for Android Pay, which is very slowly making its way across the world in terms of card and vendor support. The camera application is hard-coded to a double press of the power button in a similar way to the Samsung devices, except here, if the screen is already on, the double press first turns the 5X off and then on again with the camera interface up. It's a clutch and it feels as such. The use of type C for the data cable is the way Google had to go, of course. It's modeling where the industry is going, though I'd have liked to have seen a USB-A to type C adapter in the box. As it is, if you want to hook up your new phone, for example, to transfer media into the internal 16 or 32 gigabyte disk, you have to stop and find a shop selling the adapter first, since all current laptops and desktops are still old style USB-A. Not a problem in the long term, of course, and the reversible, more durable nature of type C will benefit us all in the end. Android 6 itself is well known by now, so let's move on to its star feature, Google Now on Tap. This was prominently featured at the Google launch event, and the idea is that something interesting is happening on screen, but not hyperlinked. You then press and hold the home control, and a screenshot is silently taken and then interpreted on Google service with the result uh, OCR'd for text and images recognized. This takes up to three seconds, which is fast considering what it's doing, but slow when you think you're sitting there waiting to see what on tap returns each and every time. Results are impressive on the whole with return links for news, YouTube, images and so on, plus general web hyperlinks. Anything you might need about a person, place or thing. Now on tap doesn't work with everything, mind you. It fails to recognize common nouns in text and common images, I found. It's just that when you activate Google Now on tap, so two seconds for activation and three seconds while it goes off to the server and comes back to show you nothing whatsoever, you'll go ho-hum and maybe less interested in trying it out in the future. Early days, though, as with Google Now itself, the results can only get better and more relevant as time goes on. There's absolutely no point in me beating Google and LG up over the Nexus 5X, its design and component choices, since I don't matter to them, neither do you. The 5X is for developers to play with and to check that everything they're planning for Android 6 works as advertised. Thus, a few million geeks around the world were also counting on the 5X to be their next hero Android smartphone is unfortunate. It's not, of course, the hero device I mean. Will the Nexus 6P fit the bill any better? <laughs> Watch this space.